Uh, we're talking to Marjorie Jobson in Pretoria. She is director of the Kulamani support group that's filing a lawsuit here in New York. Now, um, Jacob Zuma, shortly after he took office as president in South Africa, supported this lawsuit. Thabo Mbeki, the previous president, did not, saying it would discourage foreign investors. Your response to that, Marjorie Jobson? Well, we're very grateful for the new um, situation, the new spirit in the land, the sense that um, President Zuma has, has in a much wider um, a sense of what the desperate situation is of people who, in particular, were victimized. Um, we did not have the ear of the former president and, and many of his cabinet who had basically lived more than 20 years in exile and, and, and hadn't firsthand known the struggle, which was, it's very different um, having President Zuma in place. But um, what we also know is that the fact that our case has been refined and amended in the process of this um, seven years of, of trying to bring it to trial, has also been a help to the South African government because some of their concerns around the size of compensation that we've been asking for um, have, have really been allayed, and, and they no longer feel that it can th present a threat to foreign investment in South Africa. In fact, they actually state that the nature of these crimes is so serious that this really needs its day in court. Uh, Michael Hausfeld, I want to read a quote to you, a comment by uh, Princeton Lyman, who served as U.S. ambassador to South Africa from 1992 to 1995. He's now a fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations. He wrote an op-ed about this lawsuit in The New York Times last week called paying the price for apartheid. He writes, quote, "...perhaps the most fundamental moral and practical question is how the victims of the deep wrongs of apartheid should be compensated. Unfortunately for these victims, this lawsuit is not the way." He goes on to conclude, quote, "...this suit may have helped publicize the country's unmet needs and delayed justice, and it may spur the outside world to do more. But it cannot address South Africa's real needs, and if it results in yet another token payment to a few thousand people, it will make the aftertaste of apartheid even more bitter. Michael Hausfeld, your response. <clears throat> What's um, ignored is the responsibility of, of companies who can affect individual lives as much and as deeply as, as any government. Um, you, you have an issue. Um, as to who is a corporation and what are its responsibilities, uh, not just um, to shareholders, but to the, uh, the community um, which it serves and, which, and in which it does business. If companies can affect lives in ways that make those lives worse, so that people are suppressed or terrorized, as we contend the apartheid regime was towards its black South Africans, then anyone who provided the tools to enforce that suppression and terrorism are, should be responsible. If you leave that question unanswered, because you cannot fully provide um, a complete measure of justice to victims, then not only are you depriving the victims of an opportunity for justice, but you are providing corporations or types of citizens a means by which they can claim immunity from any from responsibility for what they do. Marjorie Jobson, before you go, speaking to you in Pretoria, what has been the response to this lawsuit? Is it getting much coverage in South Africa? And if you could describe particularly the people you represent, I know it's a class action suit, but to give us an example directly of how an individual life was affected. Well, um, one of the most serious issues of many of our members is the fact that their husbands, their fathers and their sons were forcibly disappeared um, and we suspect that were killed extrajudicially. And hundreds of those cases have never been resolved. People have never been able to secure 
benefits. Um, many people had insurance programs, but because the case has never been concluded, they cannot access any benefits. Um, that's very typical of, of the desperate situation people are in. Um, the levels of unemployment in South Africa are enormous. Inequality is growing. 67% um, of the ruling party's membership is unemployed. And um, so, I mean, poverty and deprivation is, is the reality for most of our members. And uh, really that that we, we think that companies have a duty to redress and that if we are going to ever achieve reconciliation in South Africa, it will mean that there has to be a bridging of this enormous and growing gulf between people who have the means to assist those who have nothing. Uh, finally, Michael Hausfeld, what happens now with the suit? You argued yesterday. Um, what's the timetable? Normally, um, the Second Circuit will take anywhere from four to six months to render its decision. And then, depending on the decision, the case can either proceed to the district court level or there may be um, a petition uh, asking the Supreme Court to review the, the, the decision. You have some heavy artillery aimed against you. I imagine the courthouse is quite full on the other side, representing these very powerful corporations. Yes, and, and those corporations that stand behind those corporations, because chambers of commerce throughout the world feel that what this case may do is set principles of corporate responsibility that can be uh, imposed worldwide. So why did you take it on? For that very reason, because if, if you don't establish the principle, then although um, you may not be able to get complete justice for the victims in South Africa today, you are basically um, ascribing to eternity the fact that no one in the future will ever be able to do that, and companies can act with, as Marjorie said, both impunity and immunity. Well, Michael Hausfeld, I want to thank you very much for being with us, uh, and also Marjorie Jobson, National Director of the Kulamani Support Group, filing the lawsuit, uh, also an associate with the Institute for Women's and Gender Studies at the University of Pretoria, which is where she was speaking to us from. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.